excited to be part of the race on the other side this year. Less nerves and more excitement, which is, is awesome. Um, I've asked if I could sweep the first night of the milers on the Friday night, so that should be great. I love running at night. That will also just be great training for me because I'm doing UTMB um, in August. Yeah, and then I'm just going to help also, I'm going to help Jock and the guys do some route marking and address registration. Um, I think it's just great to be to be on the other side for a change, yeah. you know, not, not racing. Yeah. Tell us about uh, how the year's gone. Obviously, UTMB coming up it, it is a big one for you. It is. It's massive. And I was thinking uh, last week, if anyone had told me five years ago that you're going to run 170 k's around Mont Blanc, I would have said you're absolutely crazy. But here it is and it's coming. And yeah, the, the plan this year is just to get there strong and healthy. You know, and that was also yeah. part of my decision for not racing much is it takes a huge toll on your body, um, not just physically, but also mentally. And I just wanted to get to, to UTMB feeling fresh and motivated. Yeah. So what are the goals? Have you set goals? I know, Amara, it's very difficult, I'm aware, to set a goal because more often than not, the race will tell you on the day what you're going to do. Exactly. So... Racing a miler and just going doing a miler are two very different things. Obviously, plan A is to finish. I was there last year and did um, TDS, which is another event part of um, part of that yeah. that week, and um, I didn't finish. I DNF. I had a big fall at 30 k's. So for me. Number one plan is I need to get over that finish line. It's an incredible atmosphere there in, in Chamonix. And then obviously, I think from around 100K mark, that's when you can, if you're feeling great or you're feeling good, then you can say, okay, I want to make certain times. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all about the experience. It's about soaking in the vibes. There are yeah. thousands of runners. You know, for the first three, four hours, you're basically in a queue on a single track. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, uh, just take it as it comes. We saw Ryan last year. Yes. Uh, do you are you in touch with Ryan? Do you speak to him now with the race with with UTMB coming up and maybe just get some pointers from him? I'll definitely be reaching out. Yes. Um. Uh, you know, I've seen Ryan in Cape Town on on the trails a lot. Yeah. So I'll definitely reach out to him. I just remember Matt last year, the incredible time he ran. And uh, I just remember the prize giving saying to him, you know, you could have turned around and done it again and still finished before me. So he's an incredible athlete and I think we can learn a lot from him. So I'll definitely um, ask him for some tips and advice. Colleen, the, the younger guys and younger athletes who are doing their first uh, mutt this year, and I'm not necessarily talking about the Mala because that's not going to be inexperienced runners, but I'm talking about those newbies that are tackling their first 20k run. And I know a couple of people who are very excited. What advice, as coming from somebody who loves these mountains, you know the mountains, what advice would you give to a newbie? I think um, what I've learned over the years, especially in these mountains, is um, just don't get frustrated with the terrain. It is tough terrain. I think I've said it before and it probably sounds like a broken record, but there are no free kilometers in these mountains. And a lot of people come um, to run here and they get frustrated because it's super muddy or it's rocky and they, they can't, you know, run fast enough. So just don't, I, last year even, don't get frustrated. I, I got super frustrated and you're just losing energy. Just enjoy it. Stop. Put your phone in an easily accessible place. Stop and take pictures. Soak it all in and experience it because it is truly truly spectacular terrain and, and you can see behind me beautiful backdrop yeah, looking up at uh, Craddock Peak <laughs> Craddock and George Peak, Peak. <laughs> you were up the summit of Craddock Peak a few days ago I, saw. I was yesterday morning yeah. um, up, up George Peak and Craddock Peak and it was very cold yeah um, you can feel it's it's definitely changing so yes compulsory gear in terms of just trail running not just this terrain compulsory gear and practice with your gear yeah pack it all in on your training runs because it really it is you know otherwise you it's it's a shock on race day and your shoulders are tired so yeah, yeah just practice with all your gear and just taking me into the last question speaking about the mountains people who aren't ready for much this year but they want to hike um there's very few qualified guides hiking guides in the garden route and it is i believe absolutely crucial that you take somebody who's a registered mountain guide um you are one just tell us about your guiding people. Do you want to go and experience George Peak, Craddock Peak, Prince of for the first time? 
Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm a registered mountain guide. I, I used to guide in Cape Town, but I am now permanently in George. I guide all over the Otaniqua Mountains. Um, I do the hiking as well as trail running. So if you want to do bits of the mud route, I've done all sections of um, all the mud routes before. If anyone is interested, they can reach out to me on my website, uh, www.explorewithcobro.com. Um, yeah, and, and I'll look after you, show you, show you where to go, um, keep you safe. And like you say, a registered mountain guide is pretty crucial um, for these mountains. I've gotten into trouble in these mountains myself before, so I speak from experience. Mm -hmm.